Hello, my name is Andrew Sims. I'm the head of research at Arden. I'm joined today by Chris Richards, the CEO of Plant Healthcare, to discuss the company's exciting opportunity with its pre-tech products. Good morning, Chris, and thank you for joining us. Good morning, Andy. Good to be with you. But to kick off, Chris, can you describe the pre-tech platform at Plant Healthcare and why the products are so novel? Absolutely. We call pre-tech vaccines for plants. When these products contact the plant, the plant responds throughout uh, the organism and it ends up healthier and more robust, which from a farmer's point of view gives him more yield and a better quality product. It's really important. This is a biological uh, technology, not a chemical. It's at the heart of sustainable farming. We are the forefront of good ESG. It's also good business because biological products are faster to register and cheaper to register. Uh, bringing a new agrochemical to market can cost $350 million. We do this for something like five. We've invested more than $20 million so far uh, in pre-tech over the last eight years. But we're, we're building on decades of research from Cornell University, where our chief science officer comes from. And finally, important point, these pre-tech vaccines for plants, it's not just one product, it's a whole platform with many, many products protected by very strong intellectual property. Great, and what are the first products that you expect to commercialize and what are their key features? Well, we have so far discovered within Pretech vaccines for plants, at least three distinct platforms with different properties. And our first three products come from these three distinct platforms. So the first platform is called Inartus, um, and the product is PHC 279, and this helps the plant combat disease and stress such as, as, as drought. The second platform is called T-Rex, which stamps about like a big dinosaur, and it helps farmers to control the pests in, seeds called, uh, in soils called nematodes. And PHC 949 is the first product from that platform. And finally, we have a platform called WiMAX, which are conventional biostimulants, which help farmers to produce more, more yield. And we have a product called PHC uh, 414 uh, from that platform, which is coming through. Great, and what, what, what key milestones have been passed so far with regards to the pre-tech platform and the products coming off it? Well, we started this back in 2012 uh, with a discovery process, and we screened many hundreds of products uh, from which we started to select potential products to bring to market. And then we started from 2013 onwards to file patents on those which are most useful. We did very extensive uh, efficacy testing to see how these products work in the laboratory and then the field. And from all of that work, starting in about 2015, we defined six lead products, which we then tested more all around the world in many different crops. Now, for the last two years, we've also been working on low-cost manufacturing. Um, and I'm delighted to say that our laboratory and now pilot-scale manufacturing has confirmed that we can produce these products very, very cheaply, which is clearly critically important. Lastly, we started to submit for registrations in 2019 in the US and Brazil, which are our first target markets. And most excitingly, we've achieved that very first registration uh, in Brazil in record time, in less than a year. Um, finally, we are progressing discussions with many partners over the last several years. And the first very important endorsement of the technology came through last year uh, with a joint development agreement with Wilbur Ellis, which is one of the very largest uh, US distributors. They sell more than $4 billion of product. And that's a fantastic endorsement uh, of the potential for our vaccines for plants. And how would you describe the market opportunity for the pre-tech products at this point in time? Huge. We're currently targeting markets which are worth about $5 billion. These are large opportunities in major crops. Remember that we're working with conventional agriculture here uh, to make it more sustainable. We could have targeted organic farming, but that's only 5% of, of global food production. We're interested in the 95%. And my modest aim is that we should get a peptide, one of our pre-tech peptide products, on every acre around the world. 
We're starting with soy and corn, which are the very biggest crops. In Brazil, they plant 38 million hectares of soy these days. It's, uh, the world, Brazil is the world's largest producer of soy. And in the US, particularly, specialty crops, as we call them, which are fruits and vegetables. And one of the things we're really itching to do is enter the European market. In Europe, we're very, very keen on sustainability, and it's the largest market in the world for, for biological crops. So we plan to start that process this year. Great. And what catalysts can investors expect to see in 2021 and then heading into 2022? Well, first of all, in Brazil, we achieved that that registration uh, for uh, PHC 279 as a seed treatment in soy. And we plan to launch that in the next soy crop uh, in the second half of this year. Now this is an entirely novel product. Um, there's nothing like it on the market in Brazil. It offers better growth, uh, better disease control, and more yield while helping farmers to grow the soy crop with fewer toxic chemicals. And I have to tell you, the early read from trials in the current soy crop <clears throat> which is growing today are very very encouraging so we'll be telling the market more uh, about how that is progressing um, we'll also be telling the market how we're progressing towards distribution in brazil we're a small company we need partners to commercialize and we're engaging with a number of different potential partners in in brazil turning to the us uh, we're expecting to get registration for the same phc 279 um, in the second half of next year, which will enable us to launch our first, first product in the US. And in parallel, that very important joint development agreement with Wilbur Ellis, uh, we're in discussion with other partners uh, to um, sign a series of, of joint development agreements to take us into the market in both the US and South America. And then we would love to be telling the market more about how we are planning to enter this huge opportunity in the European Union. Finally, um, we are still uh, supplying our initial product launch in Brazil from pilot manufacturer, uh, and we're working with potential long-term commercial tolling manufacturers, and we would expect to be telling the market about uh, that during the course of this year. <clears throat> Excellent. And, and given those initial target markets and the, and the scale available, uh, where do you think pre-tech goes in, in the long term? Well, as I said earlier, my, my modest ambition is to have a pre-tech product on, on every acre around the world. And that will require us to do more research by, uh, in different countries and different crops. Um, and we need to press home our advantage in intellectual property. We are very confident <clears throat> that we are leaders in the use of peptide products in agriculture, and we want to extend that yield. So extending to more crops, particularly extending to more countries, and also building on our green credentials. That's really important for our positioning uh, in the business to take full advantage uh, of the opportunity in evolving agricultural markets as they become more sustainable. Fantastic. Chris, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you for your time, Andy. 